good day and welcome to the African News broadcast from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante. Top stories. Ethiopia says vital route into Tigra via Afar now clear. Ethiopian PM says army to attack forces in Amhara region. Also, Al Behan vows to protect Al Fashaga area from Ethiopia attacks. This and more stories coming up after the break. You're welcome back from the break to a first story. The spokeswoman for Ethiopia's Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, has shamefully fabricated a lie that the belligerence of the TPLF is to blame for the blockading of the aid into Tigray region. The only viable overland route into Tigray has been through the neighboring Afar region, and Abiy Ahmed's spokeswoman forcefully told journalists that the forces have been trying to choke off the Afar corridor but that federal forces had since cleared the way. The TPLF has previously blamed the government for the blockade route while USAID says the government has created a de facto blockade making communications, banking and other vital services needed for aid efforts almost non-existent. More than 5 million people are in dire need of humanitarian assistance in Tigray, Afar and Amhara regions, according to the United Nations. It says 100 trucks a day are needed to reach Tigray alone to meet needs there. At the same press conference on Tuesday, the spokeswoman for Abiy Ahmed's office was also asked to name the foreign powers Ethiopia accuses of attempting to weaken the country. But she was not able to mention any. During Ethiopia, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has expressed confidence the federal forces will disperse and destroy forces loyal to the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF in northwestern Amhara region, the pro-government Fana TV reports. Government and its allies' violence that broke out in TPLF's northern Tigray region stronghold a year ago has spread to neighboring Amhara and northeastern of Afar region. The enemy is in the mountain called Gashena in Amhara. We are planning from here, but we have finalized a plan to disperse the enemy and be on that mountain tomorrow. The Prime Minister said while standing in the mountainous defense line with a pair of binoculars hanging from the neck. Tigrayan youth are falling like leaves. They should realize that there will be no victory in their blind and tactless strategy and surrender to the National Defense Forces starting today, Abby said. Earlier, State TV reported that the Prime Minister had called on those fighting for the TPLF to surrender as victory is imminent. The state-run ETV first showed Mr. Abbey on the front line last week, days after he said he would lead the federal troops in the battle. For its part, the TPLF says it has made significant territorial gains over the Ethiopian military. There is no independent confirmation to either side's claims. For its part, TPLF says it has made significant territorial gains over the Ethiopian military. We move to Sudan and the Sudanese army will not give up a parcel of the Fashaga Strip area, said the chairman of the Sovereign Council, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces on Monday. Abdul Fattah al bahan on Monday paid a visit to the front line in Barakat Norin locality of the Fashaga area where the army lost some 23 militaries in recent clashes with Ethiopian army and its militias that took place on 27th of November. The visit comes with reports about military build-up on both sides of the border. Al Fashaga is fully a Sudanese territorial, he said in a speech before the forces stationed in the area. He pledged not to abandon any parcel of Sudanese territory, adding that they have no ambition in Ethiopian territory.
Also, he stressed that the people stand by the army and support its soldiers in their efforts to control the entire national territory. In November 2020, Al-Bahan ordered his troops to expel Ethiopian armed militia deployed in the Fashaga area to protect the land found by the Ethiopian planters as they expelled the Sudanese farmers from their land during Al-Bashir's era. The move coincided with the tensions over the jet fire and the eruption of civil war in the northern Ethiopia region of Tigua near Sudanese border. The Fashaga's re-seizure also allowed al behind to consolidate his popularity and to bring the political parties to support him. A final story is in Sudan and thousands of people are taking part in a protest in Sudan's capital, Khartoum, against the country's military leaders. Reports says the security forces near the presidential palace fired tear gas to disperse them. The opposition has called for the protest despite a deal last week that restated Prime Minister Hamdala Hamdak and released most civilian leaders detained since October's coup. Prominent political parties and Sudan's powerful protest movement have opposed Mr. Hamdok's decision to sign the accord with the military. Some have called it a betrayal or said it provided political cover for the coup. Former BBC journalist Muhannad Hasim says demonstrators on Tuesday have been chanting no militia can rule a country and in reference to that country's military ruler behind your barracks awaits. This is where I end today's African news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sandra Asante. You should enjoy your day.